Hi, welcome to this video on smarter way for using solar panel. On this channel, Synergy Files, we aim to inspire budding engineers for a better, more sustainable world. Join the team, subscribe to the channel today. Now, many a times it has been seen that people try to connect solar panels directly to the load. The load can be anything. It can be a light bulb, a radio, or even a battery for charging or a gadget. This is never really a good idea and here is why. When a solar panel is directly connected to the load then much of the power that the solar panel has the potential to generate is not generated at all. Let's explain this further. Every solar panel has its own internal resistance which varies with the output power. When the solar panel is generating peak power, the internal resistance at this point is termed as the characteristic resistance of the panel. Now, when you connect the solar panel to the load, then the closer the internal resistance of the load is to the characteristic resistance of the panel, the more the power can be extracted from the panel. So in reality, the output of a solar panel is not only dependent upon the amount of light it is receiving and the temperature of the panel, but also it is dependent upon the value of resistance of the load. To match the resistances is difficult because normally you may have a solar panel which has a characteristic resistance of 3 to 5 ohms and you are trying to connect it to a battery that may have, let's say, an internal resistance of less than 1 ohm. The characteristic resistance of the solar panel can be roughly found out by simply dividing the maximum power voltage value with the maximum power current value. They are denoted by VMP and IMP respectively. Both of these values can be found on the specification sheet of the panel. So for example, we have a specification sheet below. In this case, we have the maximum power voltage and we also have the maximum power current given in the specification sheet. We divide them and we get the value of 3.43 ohms. Now this is the characteristic resistance. If the maximum power current and voltage is not available, then we can use the open circuit current value and the closed circuit voltage values to obtain the characteristic resistance roughly. So as mentioned before, in this case, we have a value of 3.43 ohms. If the load resistance is around 3.43 ohms for this panel, only then we will be able to get the peak power from this panel. Uh, this panel is rated at 280 watts. And if we don't match the resistances, then we will not be utilizing the panel fully. Now, as mentioned earlier, it is very difficult to have a load that has similar internal resistance or impedance value as your solar panels. So what is the solution? Well, the solution is that it is always advisable to use an MPPT device between your panel and your load. So how does the MPPT device works? Well, the device isolates the load from the panel and shows the panel a resistance or impedance value that maximize the power withdrawal from the panel. This MPPT device is nothing but a DC to DC converter with various internal resistances. The MPPT device will switch to the internal resistance level that will maximize the power from the panel for a given amount of solar insulation and load resistance. The MPPT device or the maximum power point tracking device can be purchased for as low as $15. At present, in most charge controllers and inverters, the MPPT device is built in. So whenever you buy solar panels, make sure you attach it to an MPPT device, be it in your charge controller or be it in your inverter. There are also large solar panels available in the market with power rating of 250 watt plus. Some of them are called smart panels. These panels come with the MPPT device built in. They are slightly expensive but can pay back the extra cost in two to three years with their higher output. For battery charging, the other advantage of using MPPT charge controller is that it will protect your battery from overcharging and undercharging. So I hope you found this video useful. Give us a thumbs up if you did. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and please do look at dozens of useful videos already on this channel on renewable energy and sustainability. 
Thank you for your attention.